Welcome to Chapter 2, Project Management. This chapter is mainly concerned with the project management workflow that's defined in the unified process. And we're going to list several of the steps that make up the project management workflow. The first one is identifying the project. And the deliverable out of identifying the project is creating a system request. The next step is conducting a feasibility study. A feasibility study is made up of several different parts. And we will be reviewing the feasibility study in the next recording. So this recording, we're going to concern ourselves with identifying the project and creating a system request. So the first step in identifying a project would obviously be identifying some kind of a need within the business. There is a need for a software. Perhaps a client comes to you as a development team, or perhaps management comes to you as a development team and says, I think that there is something that we can do better. I think that we need to increase our sales, or I would like to have an online presence through a website, or I would like to implement um, a mobile application for our website. <clears throat> We'd like to increase our sales or decrease our turnover. Identifying a business need means that we search for, we recognize, we find things within our company that we can improve upon that will save us money or generate more income for us. Once we have identified a business need, the next thing that we need to do is identify a project sponsor. And a project sponsor is somebody in our company who recognizes the business need for this proposed system and who has an interest in seeing the system developed. They want to implement that need that has been identified. Preferably, the project sponsor is within management. You want somebody who has a little bit of pull within the company so that they can champion or they can encourage the management within the company to look at, review, consider this proposed system, and then ultimately see the proposed system end to its completion. The project sponsor can be a single person or it can be a whole group of people, depending upon the size of the project. If it's a smaller project, you might only need one project sponsor within management. If it's a much larger project, project, you might have the entire management team as a part of the project sponsor. They need to be on board and excited and interested in the system, and they will be actively involved in the day-to-day, hands-on sort of activities of the system. And they're going to champion it or encourage the rest of the company <coughs> to develop the system and to use it. So once a need has been identified within a company, and once a project sponsor has been chosen who is going to champion the project, the next thing that we need to do is determine some business requirements. And the business requirements are just a list of features and capabilities of the proposed system, kind of a high-level list of features or functionalities. What do we want it to do? What do we want to accomplish? How is this supposed to meet the business need that we have identified? You can think of it as going into Best Buy to buy some software and flipping the box over and see a bulleted list of the features and the functionalities listed on the back of the box. This is what we're trying to identify at a reasonably high level. Once we have a list of things that the new system should do, the next thing that we want to do is identify the business value. How does it benefit our company or the company who is proposing the system? There are two different types of business value. The first one is intangible. The second one is tangible. Tangible benefits are measurable. I can say it would benefit our company with a 2% increase in sales or a 15% increase in traffic to our website. It would benefit our company by having a 10% reduction in cost or a 10% reduction in turnover. These are measurable benefits to the company. Intangible benefits, on the other hand, are not measurable. Things such as, well, it's going to increase our customer satisfaction. It's going to reduce our turnover. It's going to increase morale within our company. These are not necessarily measurable, but they do add value to the company. Now, keep in mind, this is kind of a high-level evaluation of the proposed system. So we're not going to a whole lot of detail here. But we do need to lay out why in the world we should develop this new system. Once we have identified those four things, the next thing that we're going to do is put together a formal system request. So if you look on page 53 of your textbook, you're going to notice a template, a layout for a system request. 
It's made up of five key elements. We've already talked about four of the five key elements. The first element in a system request is the project sponsor. List the name or the names of the individual who are going to be the sponsor of this particular new proposed system. The next element is the business need. This is where I would create a bulleted list of all the, re the needs within the company, <clears throat> the reasons why I want to develop this system. The next element of a system request is a business requirement. This is the bulleted list of features, functions, functionalities, capabilities for the new system at kind of a high level. The system will be able to do this, 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 and this. <clears throat> The fourth step is the business value. Now this is broken out again into the tangible and the intangible. I want measurable business value. How does it benefit my company in measurable and immeasurable ways? So I would list all of those things that I can come up with. The last part of a system request is the special issues or constraints. These are things that should be considered or may be relevant to the stakeholders or the outcome of the system. We include this particular point on a system request as a catch-all for other information that may not fit under each of the first four elements, but is, should be considered as a part of the system proposal. Once we have laid out some sort of high-level features of our proposed system, and created a system request, this document is taken by our project sponsors to the powers that be. It is submitted for approval to the powers that be. If the system request is approved, that doesn't mean that we have approval to build the system. It just means that we have approval to continue our research. And that is going to bring us to the next step of project management workflow, the feasibility study. That will be on the next recording.